Hey everyone, can you all hear me? All right, so um, hope everyone's ready. We'll get started. So um, yeah, um, my name is uh, Han, and uh, I am a software engineer intern at Plotty, uh, currently working on uh, Dash. So um, today I'm going to present you um, a bunch of uh, uh, Dash apps and components that really uh, integrate enhance and simplify machine learning and computer vision uh, with Dash uh, for your uh, machine learning projects. Um, so um, I guess some of you are not super familiar with Dash. So what is Dash? Uh, it um, combines uh, React, uh, JS, um, UI components uh, with a backend uh, Flask server, as well as a Plotty JS uh, interactive graphs to create a simple uh, but powerful and Pythonic uh, web application uh, library. So uh, you can just install Dash, uh, start writing uh, your really Pythonic web apps, and uh, there, there you are. You just deploy it, and you have your own web apps. Um, and um, yeah, so um, here you can see um, Dash uh, is a MIT open source um, library which means that um, it's uh, absolutely free um, for you to use uh, and for to, you to modify. Um, so how, how is Dash um, supported? Uh, it's mostly supported through uh, um, li uh, licensing, licensing for uh, enterprises. So uh, some enterprises need to uh, deploy a very high um, capacity uh, apps. Um, and uh, that needs to be scalable. Uh, so therefore, we offer a different type of licensing and commercial solutions uh, for those enterprises. Um, so uh, they come at multiple rates, and uh, you can find them at partly dash uh, slash dash slash pricing. Um, and uh, this link is included in the uh, document accompanying uh, this webinar. Um, so yeah, you can check them out. Let you deploy um, very powerful uh, web apps uh, on uh, the Dash deployment server, which is um, focused for that uh, purpose. Um, and uh, yeah, this uh, this kind of license really support um, like the development of Dash, the open source software, so uh, that more engineers from the Plotty team can work on developing uh, um, the core uh, components and the uh, code for rendering uh, Dash apps. Now, um, I'm going to start uh, the webinar by um, uh, presenting the uh, a few uh, machine learning demos, uh, and then uh, I'll go over uh, uh, the code very quickly to uh, really show how uh, straightforward uh, programming in the, uh, with Dash is. Uh, and then uh, after 25 minutes, at the f for the last five minutes, we're going to go uh, for a Q&A period. Um, so let's get started. The first app I'm going to present is uh, the Object Detection uh, Explorer. So um, Using uh, da Dash, one of the uh, great use for Dash uh, is that it can be easily integrated in your computer vision or uh, machine learning workflow. So um, in my in this case, um, the object detection uh, is a very hot uh, subject in uh, um, computer vision. So uh, uh, what is uh, object detection? Um, <laughs> um, so object detection is a um, um, uh, type of um, machine learning model that it should detect uh, all eight, over 80 types of um, models uh, in, um, in um, using a, um, sorry, detecting over 80 types of objects uh, using a deep learning models. Uh, so uh, the one I used in this video, so I'm just gonna quickly uh, play over it. Um, so basically, here you can see um, the model, uh, an object detection model that you uh, um, 
detect uh, specific objects inside the image uh, with a given um, confidence level for those image. Um, so uh, this particular model was made by Google and uh, it can reach basically real-time detection of those objects, which is really impressive uh, considering how huge and uh, um, power uh, consuming the uh, deep learning models are. Um, and uh, uh, in this case, uh, when you watch this video, it can notice, you can notice that um, there's a lot of things happening right now. Uh, the model uh, here is detecting uh, so many types, different types of objects at different um, confidence, and uh, at every frame there's new objects appearing and disappearing. So uh, it can be kind of overwhelming uh, in this situation, uh, keeping track of everything that's happening in the video. This is why um, I made this um, dash detection uh, explorer that lets you uh, enhance your object detection um, visualization using uh, heat maps, uh, pie chart, and uh, bar graphs. And so uh, here you can see this, um, basically this heat map that lets you, um, so I'm gonna stop it for a second and uh, okay, just have a good moment. Uh, you can see here that um, you can see here that uh, <laughs> the confidence um, for a certain object to be present in the video uh, kind of goes up and goes down. So uh, the darker it is, the darker red means that it has a higher confidence, whereas something more pale means that it has a pretty low confidence. Um, and uh, this is pretty useful because when you have a lot of things moving around in the video, you might not be able to keep track of everything that's happening. And uh, this heat map stays there, it's, it's consistent, and it just displays basically um, what is happening from very intuitively. Um, now, uh, you might feel like um, that 59% uh, confidence is a pretty low threshold, right? Uh, you want something that's, you want the video to only display uh, um, what is uh, more confident about. So um, in this case, you can increase the threshold for confidence so that it only displays um, the objects that are over this threshold. And this versa, you can decrease the threshold here to um, display more objects, even if there's a lower confidence. So for example, here we saw surfboard appear, although you don't really see any surfboard in the video. That's it because the model itself is not perfect. There's images that the model has not seen before because it was not trained a lot on those kind of, kind of objects. So that's why um, it gives a very low confidence for surfboard. Uh, but this is fine because um, you, uh, you want to really make sure that you're catching everything that's happening in this video. Um, so here you can see that uh, this video in particular is a uh, YouTube video. So this is because the video itself was pre-generated, um, is was pre-generated and then hosted on YouTube. I know it's pre-generated using a very well-known TensorFlow model, like the one I mentioned earlier, the mobile night, mobile net, um, and uh, the data collected was fed to this dash app uh, so that you can really display this. Um, like everything that's happening uh, in real time. Um, if, uh, if you want, you can always just create a, a real time model that analyzes what's happening in the video. Maybe it won't, be, uh, it won't update as quickly or as accurately, um, but it is definitely possible uh, with the given resources. So if you have uh, the right uh, GPUs um, and um, the right models that are, uh, that are a lot quicker than um, more accurate models, uh, et cetera. Um, so um, for this particular app, uh, we're gonna go over um, the code uh, later on to really see uh, how it is it is made. And uh, don't don't worry, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. So uh, you see this? I forgot to mention this object count pie chart. So this particular pie chart lets you calculate the number of object that is present in this uh, video. So according to this particular model, there's 66% of the objects detected in the video are people. Whereas maybe 9% uh, is a kite, TV, um, umbrella. Obviously, you're not so sure that there's actually a TV in this 
uh, video at this exact uh, at this exact frame, right? So you're gonna look at the confidence threshold of of the TV, and it, it's pretty damn low. So yeah, if you are afraid of that, you can just increase the threshold, and it's gonna update for you automatically. Uh, and yeah, that's it for the object detection app for now. Uh, now we're gonna look at another type of uh, use case for Dash apps. And this one is a bit different. This one is not oriented toward reporting the results of machine learning, but more monitoring your model as you train it. So um, I wanted to talk about uh, something called a TensorBoard, which uh, if you are familiar with TensorFlow, you must, um, you must have heard about it before. Um, so TensorBoard is a very powerful tool for um, monitoring um, your models as you're training them. Uh, so uh, it can display uh, your whole graph, so your whole ne neural network, uh, what kind of um, network you, are, you have. And uh, yeah, it's very uh, customizable as, as, a, as a kind of reporting software and monitoring software. Uh, and uh, it has a really great API um, because it's, it's directly integrated with TensorFlow. However, uh, the, co the code base for uh, TensorBoard is over 50 lines of code in, a, in four different languages. Um, and um, a lot, you can't really like monitor the training error of your model in real time. Um, this is why uh, I decided to create this prototype called Live Model Training, uh, which actually works with TensorFlow as well. Uh, and uh, it's pretty straightforward to use. You just have to add two or three lines of code to uh, start logging uh, the results, the accuracy and the um, cross entropy loss of your model. And then you can just fire up this app and it displays it for you. So this particular um, demo um, on, the, on our uh, website, so uh, don't forget this link in, inside the document um, we distributed. So um, this model uh, is uses pre-trained data because it can't really uh, train the model in real time uh, for every user. Um, so we're gonna see uh, how um, the training for Cypher 10 would work. And keep in mind that this, um, yes, let's reload this. this. Yeah, so um, there seems to be some uh, problem with um, the hosting right now. So um, I'm just gonna um, show you um, the, the GIFs for this particular app. So um, the, all the code uh, for all the apps I'm showing you today is uh, open sourced and uh, free for you to uh, use. Um, so you can just ch uh, check them out in a document I sent. Uh, there's a link to the project repository for all, the, all of those apps. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to quickly show um, the GitHub repository here. So this uh, live model training, uh, you can see um, um, here you can shoot. Uh, this is a demo of actually me training uh, a machine learning model using this app. Uh, and um, here you can have multiple options where you can choose to uh, maybe um, display the plots differently. So do you want them to be displayed overlapping or uh, separate? Um, and uh, also um, this is the prediction accuracy, but you can also display the cross entropy. Um, so yeah, you can also decide to uh, smooth the, uh, the curve because here you can really see it's pretty noisy uh, when it's, it is being trained. So um, you can just decide to uh, smooth it out and kind of see the trend uh, that is going. So uh, in this particular example, I think this one was trained with Cypher 10. Um, it's actually pretty, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going pretty well, but it's training pretty slowly. So there's off iteration that it has to go through. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the GitHub repository. Um, you can check out the code. Uh, and uh, really see how, uh, how it works out. Um, so now we're going to um, check out um, how to um, 
use Dash for different purpose than just um, integrating it in your ML project. We're going to see how we can use Dash App as a GUI for your machine learning models. Um, we're going to start with uh, an example of um, training uh, SVM inside a web browser. So um, here, the um, this is so 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 let's let's try to see what's happening here um, for those who are less familiar with uh, classification. Um, so here, there's two type of data in this. Um, particular data set. There's the blue data, which is which are the true or the ones, and there's the, the, the red data, which are the negative values or uh, the zeros. Um, and um, this particular model uh, is trained to uh, classify between those two types of data. And um, because this data set in particular is in two dimension, it can see how this model is, um, is uh, uh, classifying them. And in this case, it's doing a pretty good job. There's a, a couple of those um, dots that are misclassified, uh, but most of them are pretty well classified. Um, so now you might be wondering, like, what, what is um, those gradient, uh, those contour plots that goes from red to blue? Well, um, this indicates how, um, how the model is uh, predicting. So um, it's the model is pretty confident that in this particular area, um, the it sh there should be like more uh, blue dots, whereas on this particular area there should be more uh, red dots. Uh, so uh, whereas when we're approaching the middle ground between the red and blue dots, it kind of becomes white because it's not certain anymore whether it should be uh, on one side or the other. Um, so yeah, uh, this particular explorer that you uh, um, select different type of data sets, uh, so uh, linear is separable, circles, etc., and then that you select sample size and uh, add like more or less noises to your data. Um, and uh, yeah, here we have uh, basically an exhaustive um, list of parameters you can use to control your SVM. So uh, if you compare those uh, um, parameters with the official uh, scikit-learn implementation, we can see that it's pretty much the, the same parameters for this model. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically you can use different type of kernels. This one doesn't work as well as RBF. In this example, work pretty well. Uh, and uh, those are all parameters that you can tune. And uh, as, as soon as you change those, uh, those values, um, the model itself uh, is retrained on those data, and then it's displayed here. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, uh, you can also toggle off the threshold line if you, you don't like it. And um, yeah, so uh, what, is, what is threshold, actually? Um, you see, as the, when, when the model is predicting whether it's uh, red or blue dot, um, it's not actually just giving uh, a one or a zero. It's actually given a gradient of values uh, where it indicates how confident it is toward one or the other side. And if you feel that in this particular case, um, it is too confident and it's kind of misclassifying a lot of values, then what you can do is like, like adjust the threshold so that it is more, it classifies better one type of data or the other. And when you reset a threshold, you reset the default value it is classifying. So that thresholding uh, concept it really depends on what are the goal of your uh, classification tasks. So if it's fine to classify, uh, to misclassify more blue dots, so more positive data, but um, you really don't want to uh, misclassify any red data, then you can just adjust the threshold accordingly. Um, so this particular example uh, is a good way for you to learn SVM. So I presume some of you are, are not as familiar with um, concept like cost, gamma function, and drinking. So uh, playing with this app lets you uh, explore it on very simple data sets and get a better intuition about using SVM. Um, so um, yeah, that's it. Whether you're using um, SVM to, uh, uh, whether you're using Dash to display a very nice contour plots with uh, a classification task, 
are just displaying very useful metrics such as the rock curve, which indicates um, which threshold you want to uh, select, um, as well as uh, confusion matrix. Uh, so those are very useful uh, metrics. Um, there's a good way. Uh, there's, it's really easy to implement uh, those type of components uh, using Dash. Uh, so uh, this project in particular uh, is mostly done using uh, Dash and uh, Scikit-Learn. So there's very few dependency and it's pretty straightforward and easy to maintain. Uh, and also easy to uh, modify if you want to use it for other type of classifiers. So maybe a logistic regression or, um, or even a neural network for classifying. So uh, it's up to you. You can just uh, for this project uh, the repository is given in the document distributed. So um, yeah, go ahead and take a look. Um, yeah, so there's also a, another uh, app that is very similar to this one. So uh, this one is the uh, regression explorer here. And uh, this explorer um, is uh, more for predicting um, numerical values instead of a true or negative uh, true or false um, values. So uh, this is not a binary classification. Um, you can choose different type of data set again. So uh, this is a real uh, real life data set, different type of generated curve. Uh, you can add polynomial degrees so that instead of fitting a linear value, it's fitting a polynomial curve. Uh, and then obviously if you increase it too much, then it's gonna start overfitting to the data you see here it doesn't generalize very well, uh, which is why we can use a concept called regularization here, um, which, yeah, in this case, um, with uh, by penalizing the uh, coefficients that are um, that are uh, kind of overfitting, you can control how well you're fitting the data. So uh, uh, whether you're underfitting it or overfitting it, it's mostly controlled with the regularization term. Uh, here, so the alpha value. Um, right, so uh, this is also pretty cool because you can uh, use the, um, you can use your own custom data, so I'm just gonna. So you can just add um, data points here, um, so adding more training data around here, or add more uh, testing data, for example. Um, so this really lets you um, see the changes being made as you as you uh, add more data, and then uh, obviously we'll move them. And this is all done uh, using plot. Uh, so this particular interaction is done using pl uh, Plotty Python. Um, and uh, it has a very interesting um, uh, feedback. Um, so we're gonna take a quick look at the uh, code for the object detection app and then uh, we're gonna go for uh, the Q&A. Right, so here looking at the app.py file, uh, basically um, this really is similar to your other like machine learning project. You, you define your um, utility function at the beginning of the app and then uh, you uh, declare a layout as if it was an object. So here, uh, instead of having a syntax similar to uh, HTML. Instead you have something um, that's very Pythonic. So you declare a div object here and then you declare um, other type of objects. So uh, you can declare a slider component that's basically very heavily inspired from React uh, and then other type of component like dropdowns, etc. And then you can use uh, callbacks to uh, create uh, the graphs that you want to see on your um, on your app. So here in this particular case, it creates uh, a, a graph for the heat map, for the pie chart, and then those graph figures are updated uh, using another callback. So um, in this case here, you can see this callback uh, updates the figure of your um, pie chart uh, by um, looking at the current time of the video and then um, and then uh, displaying uh, the data that's uh, that was recorded by a machine learning uh, model at this exact uh, at this exact time in the video, and then it is it retrieved the data from the from um, 
the data frame, like the pandas data frame. Um, it constructs a Py object. So uh, this Py object is comes from the plot a Python library. And then finally returns uh, the figure. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I encourage you all to like explore um, those uh, GitHub repository if you want to learn more about how to make Dash apps. Uh, this one also includes uh, scripts um, in the details to, uh, to uh, generate uh, the data for any kind of video you want. Um, right, so I guess we can go for, uh, we can start a Q&A at this point. Um, so if you have any question, uh, like the last five minutes, uh, we, um, I, I, I can take your questions. Right. So um, yeah, I guess so. Um, you, you see, like the button uh, down below here, it says try dash dash. Uh, so you saw like the really cool um, components that were used uh, throughout the app. Uh, well, you have you can make some uh, really even nicer uh, UI component, especially designed for uh, data acquisition uh, using um, our new uh, library called uh, dash dash dot io. So um, here you can see um, there's uh, there's a bunch of um, nice uh, color pickers switches that you can uh, easily use in your Dash applications, um, and this library is built on top of Dash core components. Uh, so that way you can just um, really um, create nice UI for collecting data. Um, so um, Jose asked, um, how hard is it to use uh, to use for someone that never studied JavaScript? Uh, the truth is, it's really straightforward. Um, I like when I started developing uh, Dash apps, I didn't have any knowledge in JavaScript. Uh, I had a good, decent background in Python, but um, I never created any component in JavaScript. And what really helped me was um, the official like Dash tutorial. Um, so um, it goes over how to create all those type of components and how to use callbacks but all in a very Pythonic way. Um, so that way it abstract all the JavaScript, um, the Dash renderer does all the job for you to tra transfer your Python code into JavaScript so that you can focus on your Python project. So uh, yeah, if you go check out uh, this getting started guide, I'll add this link to the uh, doc accompanying document um, after after the event so that you can like, revisit it and take a look. And this one uh, really teaches you how to, uh, how to get started with Dash Apps. Right, so, um, uh, so, Ish asked, um, can you embed uh, a Dash graph in Fast? So uh, is there GitHub repo repos or uh, code to show how to? Um, well, the, the graphs used in Dash are, are the ones that are made by Plotly. So um, if you check uh, Plotly's, uh, Plotly Python's uh, library, it's called uh, plotly.py. Um, and uh, it's hosted on our party's uh, uh, GitHub account. Um, you can create a basically very nice um, party chart, uh, and th those are hosted on JavaScript. Um, as for um, displaying them in Flask, uh, I would suggest to, yeah, integrate Dash in your Flask project so that uh, you can basically create those layout um, and generate them uh, as you go. Um, as for examples, um, since Dash is built on top of Flask, most of the examples you can find on a Dash gallery are going to be using folded Dash. Um, and uh, there's an there's easy way to access um, the underlying Flask server from uh, Dash. Uh, and those are all explained in the tutorial. Uh, Jose asked, uh, can Dash handle big data sets? Uh, it totally can. 
So um, there is, um, you can easily combine Dash with a data shader uh, to uh, present a very big data sets. So um, I'll just show an example here. So you can display basically uh, min like millions of data points with uh, data shader. And as you zoom in, um, as you use this app and you zoom in uh, further for those um, data points, you can visualize, you can start to visualize a high amount of uh, uh, sca scattered um, data points on your plot, uh, on your plot graph. Uh, and uh, when I say high, like I can say like you can visualize up to a million data points using Plotly without any uh, problems. So if it exceeds that number, you can start using data sh shader to uh, render your data like into image. Uh, so I'm going to go with the last question um, since the webinar is toward the end really. Um, the, um, uh, the last question asked by Dian is, uh, does the application support offline mode? And uh, can it also visualize by changing the size of an image rate, uh, related to the uh, data changes? Uh, so does it also work with sound features? Uh, so for the support for offline mode, um, yes, if you check out uh, the latest release for Dash, so 0 0.26, we started having um, the, the option to, um, to include CSS file for offline use. So that way you don't have to connect to, uh, to the CDN, so you don't have to connect to the internet for your Dash app to work. Um, so um, yeah, you can really check out uh, on the official party um, Plotly da, slash dash on GitHub, and you can find um, the optional implementation. And the, in the release log, everything is explained there um, for the offline mode modes. Um, so as for visualizing uh, changes of images and sound, um, there's um, no uh, official support beyond the basic HTML images and sound um, like components. Uh, and uh, however, there is um, plans to, de to develop um, different kind of uh, audio and visual um, components for uh, to be used in Dash. There is um, a lot, couple of community-made components that are on the community forum, um, and uh, yeah, you can really check those out. Uh, uh, those implementations are pretty uh, were pretty well done. Um, as for official support for those kind of components. Um, there's, uh, you can check out at the advanced development, uh, like, yeah, ask the advanced development team on the uh, dash, the, uh, probably slash dash slash pricing. Uh, and uh, if your enterprise are interested in supporting uh, a, an open source uh, component for that purpose, uh, you can reach out uh, to us uh, through that link. So uh, yeah, don't, don't forget all the links are included in the document uh, we just read at the beginning. And uh, after uh, this webinar, I'm going to add a couple more links, including the, to the GitHub repository for Dash and uh, um, a couple of ones we mentioned uh, during, the, um, during the talk. So um, yeah, like I hope you get, uh, everyone liked um, the, the webinar today. Um, if, um, yeah, if you're interested, uh, go uh, talk about it in the community forum. Uh, it's at community.plot.ly and uh, yeah, like feedbacks are appreciated and um, have a good day. Bye-bye.